Once upon a time, there was a dear little girl who was loved by everyone who looked at her, but most of all by her grandmother. There was nothing that she would not have given the child. Once she gave her a little red cap of velvet, which suited her so well that she would never wear anything else, and so she would always be called Little Red Cap. One day her mother said to her, Come, Little Red Cap, here is a piece of cake and a bottle of wine. Take these to your grandmother. She is ill, and she is weak, and these will do her good. Set out before it gets hot, and when you are going, walk nicely and quietly, and do not run off the path, or you may fall and break the bottle, and then your grandmother will get nothing. And when you get into her room, don't forget to say good morning, and don't peep into every corner before you do so. The grandmother lived out in a wood half a league away from the village, and just as little Redcap entered the wood, she was greeted by a wolf. Redcap did not know what a wicked creature he was, and so she was not afraid of him at all. Where do you go so early, little red cap? To my grandmother's. What do you have in your apron, little red cap? I have some cake and wine. Yesterday was baking day, so poor sick grandmother is to have something good to make her stronger. And where does your grandmother live, little red cap? A good quarter of a league further on in the wood. Her house stands under three large oak trees. The nut trees are just below. You surely must know it, replied little red cap. The wolf thought to himself, what a tender young creature, what a nice plump mouthful, she'll be better to eat than the old woman, I must act craftily as to catch them both. So he walked for a short time by the side of Little Red Cap, and then he said, see Little Red Cap, how pretty the flowers are about here, why do you not look around, I believe you do not hear how sweetly the birds sing, you walk so gravely as if you were going to school, while everything else here is so merry. Little Red Cap raised her eyes, and when she saw the sunbeams dancing here and through the trees, and pretty flowers growing everywhere, she thought, suppose I take Grandmother some fresh flowers, that will please her too. It's so early on in the day that I shall still get there in good time, and so she ran from the path and into the wood to look for flowers, and whenever she had picked one, she fancied that there would still be a prettier one further on, and ran after it, and got deeper and deeper into the wood. Meanwhile, the wolf ran straight to the Grandmother's house and knocked at the door. Who is there? Little Red Cap, replied the wolf, she is bringing cake and wine, open the door. Lift the latch, called out the grandmother, I am too weak and I cannot get up. The wolf lifted the latch and the door flew open, and without saying a word he went straight to grandmother's bed and devoured her. Then he put on her clothes, dressed in her cap he laid himself in her bed and drew the curtains. Little Red Cap however had been running around picking flowers, and when she gathered so many that she could not carry no more, she remembered her grandmother, and set out on her way. She was surprised to find the cottage door standing open, and when she went into the room she had such a strange feeling that she said to herself, Oh dear, how uneasy I feel today, and other times I like being with grandmother so much. She called out, Good morning, but received no answer. She went to the bed and drew back the curtains, and there lay her grandmother with her cap pulled over her face, and looking very strange. Oh, grandmother, she said, what big ears you have. The better to hear you with, my child, was the reply. But grandmother, what big eyes you have. The better to see you, my dear. But grandmother, what large hands you have. The better to hug you with. But grandmother, what a terrible large mouth you have. The better to eat you with. And scarcely had the wolf said this, that with one bound he was out of bed, and he swallowed Redcap whole. When the wolf appeased his appetite, he lay down in the bed and fell asleep. He began to snore very loud. The hunter who was just passing the house thought to himself how the old woman was snoring very loudly. I must see if she wants anything. So he went into the room, and when he came to the bed, he saw that the wolf was lying in it. Do I find you here, old sinner? said he. I have long sought you. Then just as he was going to fire at it, it occurred to him that the wolf may have devoured the old grandmother, and she might still be saved, so he did not fire. He instead took a pair of scissors and began to cut up in the stomach of the sleeping wolf. When he had made two snips, he saw a little red cap shining, and then he made two snips more, and the little girl sprang out crying. And after that, the aged grandmother came out alive also, but scarcely able to breathe. Red cap, however, quickly fetched great stones in which they filled the wolf's belly, and when he awoke, he wanted to run away but the stones filled his belly so heavy that he was unable. He fell down at once and fell dead. All three were delighted. The hunter drew off the wolf's skin and went home with it. The grandmother ate the cake and drank the wine which Redcap bought her and was revived. But Redcap thought to herself, as long as I live, I will never by myself leave the path to run into the wood when my mother has forbidden me to do so. Redcap was once again taking cakes to her grandmother. Another wolf spoke to her and tried to entice her from the path. 
Redcap, however, was on her guard and went straight forward on her way and told her grandmother that she had met the wolf and that he said good morning to her, but with such a wicked look in his eyes. If it had not been on a public road, she was certain he would have eaten her up. Well, we will shut the door so he may not come in. Soon afterwards, the wolf knocked on the door and cried, Open the door, grandmother. I am little Red Cap fetching you some cake. But they did not speak, nor open the door. So the grey beard stole twice or thrice around the house, and lastly he jumped on the roof, intending to wait until Red Cap was home in the evening, and then steal her away and devour her in the darkness. But the grandmother saw into his thoughts. In front of the house was a great stone trowel. I made some sausages yesterday. Take the water in which I boiled them to the trowel. Redcap carried until the great trowel was full. Then the smell of the sausages reached the wolf, and he sniffed and peeped down, and at last he stretched out his neck so far that he could no longer keep his foot in, and he began to slip. He slipped down from the roof and strayed into the great trowel, and drowned. But Redcap went joyously home, and never did anything to harm anyone. The story of Little Red Cap is one that I'm sure nearly everyone growing up has heard of, but it's likely the version you heard may have been called Little Red Riding Hood. At first glance, the story is a very simple tale that warns of the danger in talking to strangers and those who wish to trick and take advantage of you. But there are several interesting versions of the story. The first published version of the story was written by the French author Charles Perrault in the 17th century. In fact, much of Perrault's work would later be rewritten by the Brothers Grimm. Perrault's version centres around a young, well-bred village girl who is tricked by a wolf who lays a trap in her grandmother's house. He then, of course, eats the girl, but there is no woodcutter or hunter and there certainly is no happy ending, as it is the wolf that emerges victorious in this story. Perrault's explanation of his story was that it was a warning to young well-bred ladies to avoid listening to strangers, and many saw his version as an early warning of paedophilia. In the Brothers Grimm's version of the tale, it's very clear that the first story warns against the naivety and the trust of strangers. The second tale was almost the Brothers Grimm showing us what happens if you listen to the warnings of the first story and apply them to the same situation. This time you and Redcap can emerge the victor, rather than the victim. The story of Redcap, as I'm sure many of you are aware, has been adapted several times over the years, each time becoming more and more tame. So feel free to share any versions of the story that you may have heard with me in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.